All right, so this is a model of a neuron. Just imagine that this axon is attached up here, all right, but it's detached. Now looking at this, I can tell that this is a multipolar motor neuron because here's our cell body or our soma, and there are multiple processes that come off of it. So this is a multipolar, multiple processes, okay? So first thing I do is identify the cell body. That's the easiest. I can find this, the nucleus. So here's our cell body. These shorter processes that are coming off of the cell body, and then you can see that there's one long singular process. This is the axon, whereas these shorter ones are the dendrites. The dendrites and the cell body are the receiving end of neurons. So they will receive a stimulus either from um, like receptors embedded in their own membranes or from axon terminals of presynaptic neurons, right? So remember a synapse is a functional junction. Here, these guys, all these little rubbery guys, these represent synaptic uh, terminals. So each one of these is an axon terminal from a presynaptic neuron. So if you could just extend this axon out, you would eventually see a cell body and dendrites of the presynaptic neuron, right? But this is what the, that's what these represent, right? So these are axon terminals of presynaptic neurons, which are synapsing with this postsynaptic neuron, right? Now here, this synaptic terminal, this axon terminal is cut so that you can see the inside. And on the inside, you see all these little vesicles. These vesicles are filled with neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are chemical messages which will tell this postsynaptic neuron what to do. All right. So this postsynaptic neuron will receive a message, will receive a message in the form of a neurotransmitter. And then if it's an excitatory message, an action potential will generate at this region right here called the ac uh, axon hillock. So this funneled region that comes down and extends into this singular long axon, this is the axon hillock. And this is what triggers an action potential. An action potential is just an electrical impulse, and it's a way of conducting a message to the next effector cell, either another neuron or a muscle cell or a gland. Okay. So here, again, this is the axon. All right, um, let's see. So that's the axon, again, is the conducting region. Dendrites and cell body, that's the receiving region of a neuron. The axon is the conducting region. And then if we were to be able to extend this model out further, we would see that this axon eventually leads to a synaptic terminal itself, okay? That would synapse with the effector cell, either another neuron or a muscle or a gland. The next structure I wanna point out are these guys right here that are wrapped around the axon. This one, this is a Schwann cell. This is a Schwann cell. This is a Schwann cell. Schwann cells are neural glial cells of the peripheral nervous system. Neural glial cells are supporting cells. They support the neurons. Okay, so this is a Schwann cell. This is a Schwann cell. This is a Schwann cell. You can see that the nucleus of these cells are pushed to the periphery. And that happens because they wrap around the axon multiple times, forming this myelin sheath, right? So if you see those concentric layers that are tightly wrapped around the axon, this is the myelin sheath. Myelin is about 80% lipid, 20% protein. So lipids are a really good insulator. Uh, um, so an action potential is a bioelectrical impulse. Well, wherever there's this insulation, that electrical impulse can't travel. So the action on a myelinated axon, action potentials will jump from node of Ranvier to node of Ranvier to node of Ranvier. So that means action potentials don't have to travel down the entire length of the axon, but rather just these nodes. That's called saltatory conduction or jumping and that speeds up an impulse. So a myelinated neuron will be much faster at um, transmitting an action potential than an unmyelinated axon. 
The last structure that I wanna point out on this model is this connective tissue covering that surrounds an individual axon of an individual neuron. This is called endoneurium. None of our models show a perineurium, but so let's go through endoneurium would be the connective tissue investment that surrounds an individual neuron, an individual axon of an individual neuron. Perineurium would surround a bundle of axons and then epineurium would surround an entire nerve, like a spinal nerve. So on the spinal cord model, where we have our spinal nerves, they're wrapped. Spinal nerves are mixed nerves, which contain both motor and sensory neurons. That connective tissue covering around the entire spinal nerve would be the epineurium.